In this video, we'll look at graphing the parent function y equals 1 over x, which is the reciprocal function. So, as we like to do, we start with 0 and sub in 0 into this equation. But something unusual happens in this case. When you sub in 0 here, you're really saying what's y when you do 1 divided by 0, and that's an error. You can't actually ever, in mathematics, divide by 0. So we're going to say that that's undefined. That is, there's no y value when x equals 0 here. You can't have that point on the reciprocal function. The other thing that's very different for graphing the reciprocal function is our choices of x's. And what we're going to do is choose numbers that make easy fractions because they're all going to be in fractions, right? This is going to be 1 over negative 8. And we're going to see what happens when we pick negative 8, negative 4, negative 2. You can pick any numbers you want, but if you pick like negative 3, you'd get 1 over negative 3, which would be a big, long, repeating decimal, hard to graph. I'd rather have these numbers, negative 8, negative 4, negative 2, negative 1. But we're also going to need to see what happens when you have negative 0.5 and negative 0.25. Then we see 0, and we're going to do the same on the other side, is look at 0.25 and 0.5, as well as 1, 2, 4, and 8. There's a lot of values we have to check out here. Well, let's start. 1 divided by negative 8 is negative 1 point, sorry, negative 0.125. And 1 divided by negative 4. That's just negative a quarter, or negative 0.25. You might not need a calculator for some of these. For example, 1 divided by, I'm just subbing into this equation, 1 divided by negative 2 is negative 0.5. Or 1 divided by negative 1, 1 over negative 1 is just negative 1. But something interesting happens though when you're dividing by a decimal. What's 1 divided by negative 0.5? Negative 2. What's 1 divided by negative 0.25? 1 divided by negative 0.25. You get negative 4. And if you want to know why that's occurring, just if you're interested, and you don't just want to trust your calculator, 1 divided by negative 0.25, well, that's the same as 1 divided by negative a quarter. And hopefully you learned in grade 9 math, or you will if you're currently in grade 9 math, that when you're dividing by a fraction, it's the same as timesing by its flip, or by its reciprocal. So 1 divided by negative a quarter is the same as 1 times negative 4 over 1. 1 times negative 4 over 1 is negative 4. In other words, because you're dividing by a decimal, it's like dividing by a fraction. And when you divide by a fraction, you flip and change to times. And that's why we're getting these numbers. Look, it'll happen with the positive ones too. 0 is undefined. What's 1 divided by 0.25? Positive 4. What's 1 divided by a half? Here's another way to think about it. What's 1 divided by a half? Split 1 into halves. How many pieces do you have? 2. Just like this one was. Split 1 into quarters. You have a 1 whole split into quarters. How many quarters you got? 4. Split 1 into 1, you have 1 thing. So what's 1 divided by 2? You get a half. What's 1 split into 4 pieces? You each get quarters, or 1 divided by 4 is 0.25. What's 1 divided by 8? If you're not sure, you can ask your calculator. What's 1 divided by 8? 0.125. And notice these numbers are the exact same as the other side, except they're all positive. Now we're ready to graph the reciprocal function. We put our arrows on the graph to show that the graph goes on forever. Label the x and y axes, and start to label what will become our scale. And then we're going to need to label that scale. So I start with the x-axis positive and the y-axis positive, and the x-axis negative numbers, and the y-axis negative numbers. And now let's put those points and see what happens. Something very interesting happens with the reciprocal function. It's unlike many other functions. When you're at negative 8, it's on the negative side, but very close to the axis. When you're at negative 4, it's still very close, but a little bit off the axis. When you're at negative 2, it's halfway down. But when you get to negative 1, it's all the way here. And now, here's the really interesting part why we had to use these decimals. When you get to negative 0.5x, 
you go all the way down to negative two. And when you're at negative a quarter, you're all the way down. So you're like just a quarter left here, you're all the way down four. And that's because of the idea of asymptotes. I like to label the asymptotes when we do our reciprocal function and say, look, I understand that this function will never touch this line y equals zero. Similarly, reciprocal function has another asymptote, a line it will never touch, but get very close to, infinitely close to, but never touch. It has a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote, and these numbers reveal that pattern. That is, it gets infinitely close, but never touching here along the x-axis, and then as it starts to approach the y-axis, it curves out and down, now getting infinitely close, but never touching to the y-axis. And a similar thing's going to happen on the positive side. At zero, it's undefined. How come it's undefined? Can't divide by zero. That's your vertical asymptote, that line you can't touch. But just past that, at a quarter, for example, at 0.25, it's up at a value of 4. And at 0.5, that is 0.5 of an x, you're up at a height of 2. And at 1 on x, you're 1 on y. But now we're going to start to close in on the x-axis. When you get to x of 2, you're only at a height of 0.5. And when you get to x of 4, you're only at a height of a quarter. And when you get to x of 8, you're barely above at 0.125. So again, this same sort of pattern is this shape, this reciprocal function, stays really close to the y-axis and only starts to curve out as it approaches the x-axis and then once again closes in on that other axis, in this case an asymptote, and approaches it but never touches it. And so this characteristic shape is in fact the graph of the parent function y equals 1 over x or the reciprocal function.